Good afternoon and welcome to another InReach Field Experience webinar. Today we'll be sharing an essential guide to InReach technology and features. So to get started, my name is Chip Noble. I'm a product manager here at Garmin. And as you can see from this uh, slightly crusty photo from the uh, keyhole on the Long's Peak hike, I'm an avid outdoorsman. For those that remember, we actually did a presentation, a webinar around my Long's Peak hike a while back. And uh, that was all around planning, exploring and sharing within reach. So I will be your trusted guide today on all things uh, in reach. So we will kick things off. Uh, I like to start all of our presentations giving a little bit of a, an overview of inReach technology. That is really what's brought us together today to talk about Garmin's inReach devices and that ecosystem. Certainly all of our inReach devices take advantage of that global uh, Iridium satellite network that allows us to connect uh, our inReach devices and send messages to friends and family. That's 100% global Iridium satellite network. Again, that lets us send and receive text messages. So send them to your friends and family and hear back from them. It lets us track and share our journey. So everyone has access to a map share page. You send that to your friends and family and they can follow along while you're on your adventure. Should you uh, find yourself in an emergency situation, you can trigger an SOS with any of our inReach devices that takes advantage of that send and receive capability with the Iridium satellite network to reach out to the Garmin IERCC, that's the International Emergency Response and Coordination Center. We will talk about all of these things in more detail later, but uh, that is the organization that provides our 24 seven um, monitoring service. You can also use inReach to request weather forecasts. We'll talk about land forecasts and marine forecasts, lots of, uh, Lots of exciting things you can learn about the weather. You can use our inReach devices and uh, companion apps to navigate a route or a course. You can you can also go to a waypoint. Uh, as I mentioned, you can pair your inReach device with your uh, smartphone to gain access to several uh, companion apps that we make available: the EarthMate and the Garmin Explore app. You see a notice at the bottom of the screen that will appear. Several times throughout the presentation, the key there is, as we all know, inReach technology, an inReach device requires an active satellite subscription. And we also like to point out that there are some places in the world that uh, regulate or even prohibit the use of satellite communication devices. It is all of our responsibilities as we strike off on our bucket list adventures to check ahead of time and make sure we understand any uh, special laws or, or jurisdictions around the use of a satellite communication device. So make sure that we do that before our trip. Wanted to have a quick highlight of what we're gonna cover today. Uh, we are going to be talking about all of our devices, about the inReach ecosystem, how the Explore fits into that. Uh, the, the content we're gonna cover applies to all of our inReach devices, but this is a little table that breaks down some of the uh, the comparisons of device and feature. The screenshots that we're gonna show in today's presentation focus on the Explorer Plus, the InReach Mini, the GPS Map 66i, and the Mini 2. We've chosen the 66i because it is representative of those traditional handheld devices from Garmin, the GPS Map series, the Montana series, and the Alpha. You should see uh, pretty much the same screenshot on those devices. As we look at the table, uh, we are going to look at all the inReach features. There are some differences between the devices with on-device maps. Certainly the Explorer Plus, the GPS Map Montana, and Alpha deliver maps where the Mini does not. Virtual keyboards across the board. The companion apps, this is a topic we cover a lot for, for our users with the Explorer Plus and the SE Plus and the inReach Mini. We'll be talking about the EarthMate app. That was the first companion app for Garmin uh, and Delorme inReach devices. We will focus on the Explore app for those, uh, those newer devices like the GPS Map Montana Mini 2 and Alpha 200i. All of the devices that we're gonna talk about today actually have their own very specific webinar that we've recorded over the past handful of months. The link to those webinars are available in the handout. Um, and then the last piece is just a little bit of detail about the 
devices that support Bluetooth or Bluetooth and Ant, or some of them even support Wi-Fi, so the connectivity there, and then the type of routing uh, that you can do, either routes by course or, or by route. So a little bit about the devices and what we're going to cover today. From there, we will we'll jump right in, and, and we'd like to share, because I know for a lot of folks, this, um, this introduction to InReach, it really starts with the Iridium Satellite Network. That is uh, the service, the, the satellite provider that we work with. We're partnered with Iridium, and that is how we deliver our InReach messages. If you have an emergency and you need to declare an SOS, if you want to request a weather forecast or track, that all happens via the Iridium Satellite Network. So everyone's familiar with the GPS uh, satellite network. That's how your location is determined by triangulation with those satellites. The Iridium Satellite Network is similar, but that is the communication network. So messages sent from your device, again, using that 100% uh, satellite, uh, global satellite network covering 100% of the planet, message goes up to the satellite and gets transmitted uh, relayed to the person you're sending to. Iridium uses a global mesh network. That means all of the satellites you see in this picture can actually talk to each other. That's how they relay the message over that mesh, mesh network using low earth orbit satellites. It's an interesting um, kind of a mouthful there, but really all that means is they are, as you see here, 485 miles above the earth. And uh, when you compare that to some of the other networks that use geostationary orbits, just read there that those are further away, 22,000 miles. So the low Earth orbit satellites are stronger, faster for connection and transmitting, and that means the message you send is easier for us to deliver and, uh, and faster for us to deliver. Some interesting statistics there, the first satellite was deployed in 1997, and back in 2019, Iridium actually replaced all of their satellites without disrupting their service. The link at the bottom for those that are interested in more details, you can go to iridium.com and check out their network. Uh, but really the key takeaway there, 100% global satellite network uh, coverage. And, and because those satellites, you see they travel in a polar orbit from the North Pole through the equator to the South Pole. That means even in the Northern and Southern latitudes, um, Alaska, the Arctic, the North and South Poles, those kind of locations, there is um, very good Iridium coverage for messaging. One of the other things that we like to talk to people about is what it actually means for our wireless data transmission. How does a, an in-reach enabled device that's using the Iridium satellite system compare to some uh, devices like your phone that use cellular or LTE? And the key takeaway there is that LTE or cellular requires that ground-based cell phone tower and you need to be in proximity of one of those towers for your signal for your for your phone call or your text message to be delivered contrast that with the iridium network where you have those satellites overhead um, with that global satellite network and uh, it just means that you will have the ability to track your location send your message that sort of thing so iridium uses the mesh network, you send your message to the satellite, the satellite relays the message to the ground station and the ground station then sends it out through the internet to your friends and family where the cell phone service requires close proximity to one of those cell phone towers. Pretty straightforward. So we've talked about the infrastructure, kind of the, the, um, the system that allows those messages to go through. Now I'd like to talk about some of the details around in reach and we'll start with the in reach subscription plan as we look at our subscription we have we have to necessarily start on the website where you go to create your account uh, it is where you manage your subscription that's everything from your account settings to your plan your contacts we're going to look at that in detail in a couple of slides it's where you can go to do your trip planning you can create and manage your routes and your waypoints all of that happens on the explore website uh, we'll look at the apps that do that now as well uh, towards the end of the presentation. It's where you can go to review any of your activities. So you just recently went on a big hike. You can go to the Explore website. You can see your, uh, your track line for where you traveled. You can see if you created any um, messages, that sort of thing. So reviewing your trip on the website. 
It's also where you can go to do your um, to bring in user data like a GPX file or a KML file, um, and that is convenient because it means you can access data that might be on a third-party website. Maybe a friend had it and they sent it to you. you. Can pull all of that into the Explorer website. So very powerful tool. So let's dig in a little deeper within reach subscriptions. And uh, so once you have created your account, let me see here. Once we've created our account and you go into the into the website, you can do things like manage your emergency contacts and your notes. Um, we call this out because it's very important. Those emergency contacts are the people who the Garmin IERCC will reach out to if you have an emergency. So make sure that you review and update your emergency contacts um, before any big trips. There's also the emergency notes. That's a very important field. That is where you can specify a detail that you want the Garmin IERCC to be aware of. In case of an emergency, it could be anything from your blood type to an allergy that you have or some other medical condition that is important for a local area search and rescue to know about should you have an emergency. So as you set up your account, you come in, you, you create the account, you set up your personal contact information, you set up your emergency contact information, and then make sure you add in any emergency notes. This is also where you would go to manage your device. Part of the activation process is putting in the IMEI, the unique identifier for your inReach device. It's where you would go to manage your inReach device. Um, the, the quick start guide that comes in the box with each inReach device is, is very well written and guides you through this process but that's important detail. It's also where you can go to manage your plan. We're gonna look at some details about the plans in a slide uh, or two, so I won't go into a lot of detail, but this is the part of the website where you would go and choose which plan you wanted to be in, whether it was safety or expedition. And you can do that from uh, the Explore site. And it's also where you can go to get instructions on how to sync and update your device. So you can connect different devices um, to your computer and you can use things like Garmin Express to do a, a firmware update. You can use the Sync app for some devices depending on which model you have. Another very useful tool in the Explore website. We like to sprinkle some tips into our webinar for people just to make sure you're all aware. For any of you that may be upgrading from an InReach Explorer Plus to a, a shiny new InReach Mini 2 maybe, or you've gone for the GPS Map 66i, there is the ability to swap your uh, service between two devices. When you do that, if you, you come into plans and devices, you can choose to add an in-reach device, and then one of your options is I am switching. And this is convenient because it takes the data plan that's currently assigned to, in this example, your in-reach Explorer Plus, and allows you to choose another device and swap that over. Pretty straightforward. So let's look at subscription plans. I mentioned those a second ago. As we've said, an active subscription is required for each inReach device, and uh, they are what allow you to take advantage of tracking, messaging, weather, and SOS. The first plans that we'll talk about, those are personal plans. That's what most of our consumers, all of our consumers have. They are, as you see here, intended for one user with one inReach device. There are two flavors of personal plans. There's the freedom plan, which is very exciting for people who have seasonal device use. Say you're a backcountry skier or you're a sailor or you're involved in some activity where at the end of your season, you would like to suspend the device. The freedom plan is for you. For people who are more of, and you know, I use it all year round. The annual plan does afford you some cost savings and I highly recommend it. That is a plan that would allow you to um, say, put the device um, you know, in your vehicle, have it with you should you have an emergency, take it with you when you go on that special adventure, regardless of what time of year it is. We also have professional plans. If there are any listeners on today's webinar that find themselves in that kind of organization uh, scenario, or they run a team, or they are uh, you know, an enterprise business, we certainly have a, um, a professional sales team that can help you with that. The professional flex plans are designed for multiple users who have multiple devices. So there is an administrator of your account and they can manage 
assignment of devices and data plans for devices, lots of very advanced things in that professional um, category. So we get a lot of questions from people and we thought we would head off some of them right here with the with a quick list. We'll go through these. Can I have more than one in reach device and user on a personal plan? Um, as I mentioned before, personal plans are designed for one user. It's really around the idea of the person who buys the inReach Mini and wants to take it hiking, that sort of thing. You can add additional devices, but you can only have um, one device active at a time, and, and that device is assigned to you as an individual user. Uh, can I have multiple devices on one subscription plan? For both professional and personal plans, personal and professional plans, uh, the device needs to have a subscription plan. So the, it's a it's a one to one for the plans. While I I mentioned that you could swap, what you're doing is you are uh, you're you're deactivating one and activating the other device. So as a personal user with a um, with devices in my account, each device has to have its own subscription plan, and you can can only have that one plan per personal account. Other scenarios are more in the professional category. Is there a cost to move up and down a plan? Um, there is not a cost. This is one of the things that we've worked hard to, to refine over the years. And so you can move between the, um, the safety plan uh, and, uh, excuse me, through the, the freedom and uh, annual plans, and you can move up and down between safety and recreation and expedition without any cost. You, you do have to stay in the plan that you move to for that one month duration, but, um, but it is free to move up and down. And that's an important thing as you think about people who have a bucket list trip coming up, and they go and they hike you know, Mount Rainier, and when they come back from that hike, they wanna drop back down into the safety plan. We certainly allow people to do that without a penalty. Can I let a friend or family member uh, borrow my device? Yes, you certainly can. The uh, one of the things that we encourage people to do is to go in and change the display name for the device. That way, when someone is following along, they see the name of the person actually using the device. It also will change the name that appears when a text message goes out. You'll, um, so it can prevent some confusion. Uh, and you also want to note that the emergency contacts, you may want to update those as well when you when you pass the device to someone to borrow for an adventure. Um, so yes, you can let a friend or family member borrow your device. Let's look at in-reach messaging. This is one of the most important features of the device. When we look at in-reach messaging, we have to, uh, you know, you can send a message from your device to someone's cell phone, to someone's email address, or, or an exciting feature that I really like is you can send an in-reach message to another in-reach user, even though both of you are well outside of cell phone range in the backcountry. So there are several different types of messages. One is a custom message. This is pretty self-explanatory. This allows you to type exactly um, what you wanna say in the moment and you can choose who you want to send that to. You can do that using the button input on your inReach device or you can use an app on your, you know, the EarthMate or Explore app on your paired uh, uh, phone, your paired mobile device. Custom message, another message type is a preset or the ability to send a check-in. Uh, we support up to three check-in messages and those check-in messages have predefined text that's written ahead of time as well as a predefined set of recipients. This is an important distinction between custom messages, presets, and in a second we'll look at quick text. And the idea is because a preset goes to a uh, a predefined list of recipients and has a predefined message. It's actually a very small message that the device sends to the satellites. So we provide an unlimited number of preset messages with all of our data plans. It's very handy. That means you could send, I'm starting my trip. Later, you can send, I'm checking in, everything's okay. And then you could send, I'm finishing my trip and you don't pay any additional uh, rate for those. The safety plan user can use those three very useful check-in messages. The other type of message is a quick text message. This is uh, more, as the title explains, it's a way to quickly enter your text message. You can customize them. You can choose from up to 20 
predefined quick text messages. You do, uh, you do have the ability to specify a recipient. A quick text message does cost one of your message allocations, so 10 messages in safety, 40 messages in recreation. That's what you get each month. When you send a, a quick text message, it does cost a message. So presets, unlimited, three very um, kind of locked in message uh, check-ins, quick text message, a lot more flexibility, but you pay for those, and certainly a custom message you pay each time you send it. Some important differentiation there um, with those messaging types. So let's look at how do we actually manage those presets in quick text. Pretty straightforward. You go into the Explore website, you go to Messages, and then you have an Edit option on both presets and quick text. And you click uh, the Edit button, and then it pops up a little dialog where you can change the message and you can change who receives it. Once you hit Done, just make sure that you sync that message to your device. Um, same for editing your quick text messages. When you look at the quick text side of things, you click Edit or Add and then you can change the text and when you hit save um, it will it will make it uh, part of your explore account and then just remember to connect your in reach device to either your computer or to the app uh, on your phone so that you can sync those changes so that you see them on the device another thing that we can do from the explore website is manage our personal contacts I mentioned that here because if you're going to use your inReach device in standalone, you want to make sure that those phone numbers or email addresses of the people that you're going to communicate with are uh, uploaded to the device. Just like quick text and presets, this is uh, straightforward. You click on contacts, you click add, you fill in the contact information and you click done. Do this for anyone that you communicate with regularly so that they are available on your device when you get into the backcountry. And don't forget to sync. Last note there, these are your personal contacts for casual messaging. These are not the same as your emergency contacts. Make sure you go to the uh, account section like we looked at in the beginning if you want to edit your emergency contacts. How do we use an in-reach address? I mentioned before that you can send a message to someone's in-reach device if you're both in the backcountry. Important to remember, it's not actually an email address, even though it appears like that with the at inreach.garmin.com. This is more just a, a unique identifier for your inReach device that you can share with other users so that they can send you inReach to inReach messages. Um, it can be found in the account section on the Explorer website, or you can go to devices, settings, setup, or utilities. And there's the format I just mentioned. And uh, you can add an inReach contact for someone and use it. You know, there's an interesting thing you can do if you and your friends all set up a preset that is I'm checking in everything's okay and you use the um, in reach address as a recipient you can send with a with a simple button press a location update to the other people who are out in the backcountry with you keep in mind while preset messages are free to send when you receive that message even if someone sent it to your in reach address you do pay for that so keep that in mind but the inReach address is very handy for some of those things. And keep in mind that uh, your any message sent from an inReach device does include the message location. So if someone sends from one inReach to another, you can now track the location of that person. You could navigate to them, that sort of thing. So how do we send a message? Let's take a look at the preset messages and the check-ins. Uh, this is our first slide that shows that breakdown of all of the screenshots for the different devices. This table with the Explorer Plus, the Mini, the GPS Map 66i, and Mini 2, we'll use that on all of our slides as we go through today. Preset message, you go to the preset section or you go to the messages section and find that, um, and it lets you quickly send that message out. I've already mentioned that they are unlimited and how the billing works. Uh, so to send, go to preset messages, select preset to send it, select send. Very very straightforward. It's designed to be quick and easy. Uh, how to send a quick text message. These, as I've already said, they, it saves you time in composition and um, you can send those from the device and, and they do, as a, again, as I mentioned, they count towards your message total. 
the process for sending a quick text. Uh, you see in the interface the little lightning bolt or, or it actually types out send quick text. That is where those 20 predefined uh, text phrases live and you can access them, pick the one that you care for, insert it into the message and then hit send. Sending quick, uh, quick text messages. How to send a custom message. This is uh, similar, you go into the messages section on each device, you choose new message, and uh, from there you can use the keyboard. You know, on some devices with the button interface, you have a, a virtual keyboard that pops up and allows you to navigate the text. Other uh, devices like the mini require that you go, um, uh, that you move up and down through a vertical scrolling list of letters and, and numbers and symbols, but the key is, even if your phone has isn't with you or disabled anything like that, all of the devices allow you to send that custom message. If you if you really need to communicate, even from the Mini 2, you can you can type that message. Uh, so sending messages. I'd like to talk a little bit about map share and tracking. This is very important for your friends and family. This is how they get to come along on the journey with you. They get to experience it, even though they're not uh, on the trail. With you, but your your map share is a web page that you can send to friends and family, and it is it allows them to see your breadcrumb trail for where you've been. It lets you plan ahead of time with waypoints and the course that you're going to follow. You can upload that to your map share page so people can see what the what the journey may look like, what you have done, and what's left to be accomplished. Um, so some really Cool stuff. Let's take a look at how you configure your MapShare site. You go to the Social tab in the Explore website, and from there you can do things like enable or disable your MapShare. You can create a custom URL. Uh, maybe you want to just make something easy to tell people, like uh, it's share.garmin.com slash and then your name or something like that. It is also where you can go to configure settings. There are a lot of important settings around MapShare. Things like uh, specifying a password or setting your page as private or um, controlling what your viewers can do when they come to your website. Uh, they, could, they could send you a message, they could locate you. You can control whether you want all of those things to happen. Once you have configured your map share, uh, you can then send that link, there's a share option. So you could email your map share to people, you could post it on Facebook, you could post your map share link on Twitter. A lot of flexibility. The key is the map share page is the, uh, the only place where someone who wants to send you a message, they can go there and initiate the message on their own. Uh, so some hints uh, or tips, we like to talk about the tips. You can hold older, hold, you can hide older tracking data. Um, and really, if you think about that, if you hike every weekend, but you have a special bucket list trip coming up, you may want to hide any of the older data to help someone focus in on the special activity that you're taking part in. So you do that by um, selecting the date field, and really that amounts to hiding data older than this particular date that you specify. You pick the date, and you click save, and anything older than that Tri the trip that's upcoming gets hidden. Very straightforward. Another tip that we like to tell people, this is uh, the only option for other people to start the conversation. So I actually got ahead of myself and already described this. But if you enable that ability for friends and family to send you a message, they can do that um, through your MapShare page. Now, the important thing to remember is that does cost you one message. So if you have that bucket list trip, the special event that's coming up, just consider stepping up into the expedition plan for that trip. Share your map share link with people, let them send you messages, and uh, and you will love the opportunity to interact with them while you're on your adventure. Uh, so that's all through MapShare. Tracking, this is uh, the way that people follow along on MapShare. It's important to know how to do this on each of the devices. There is a tracking page or a widget or, or a glance, something like that. And you go there and you can do things like uh, start or stop tracking. And that that's Iridium tracking or in-reach tracking. So your 
every 10 minutes by default, your location goes from your device up to the Iridium satellite, like we looked at in the Iridium slide, and then down to the, uh, the server that receives those messages from the satellites and then out to the website to update your MapShare page. Uh, so in reach tracking. Some tips for this. Uh, one of the things that we always like to tell people about Really, if you're if you're in that recreation plan or above, you can set your device to automatically start tracking, and that's very handy. It means all you have to do is turn your device on, and it and it does the rest of it for you. Um, this has some advantages if you are in the automotive activity where you have a powered mount. Say you're a pilot, or you have that on your boat, or in your your off-road vehicle, you can put your in-reach device in the cradle. It has power. When you turn the ignition on in the vehicle, that power will wake up your in-reach device and automatically start tracking. So you don't have to think about that at all. Then when friends and family want to know where you are, they just go and visit your MapShare page and it will show you, um, it will show them your, uh, you know, your, your flight across the state or whatever your activity might be. And I, and I mentioned to be sure to use the a recreation plan because that is the first plan that has unlimited tracking in the safety plan you do pay I believe it's 10 cents per track point um, so consider the recreation plan once you've set all this up and you're in the field there is um, the ability to share the map share link even from the field if you forgot to do it before you left or say on occasion, you decide you're going to hike with a friend, and they say, "Oh, that's neat. Can you send your map share link to my friends and family so they can follow along as both of us are on this adventure?" To do that, all you have to do on the Explore Plus Mini or GPS Map 66i is to choose tracking, send map share, and share, and that will send a message to whoever the recipient is and include your map share link. Capability also exists for the Mini 2 that allows you to um, it's just a different process, but uh, but start tracking, okay, share with, and you follow the process. But in the, at the end, you're still sending a message to the recipient that includes your map share link, so that they can, uh, as we saw, they can send you messages, they can track your location, that sort of thing. So remember to share your map share link. So let's take some time and talk about SOS. This is obviously core functionality for all of our in-reach devices. We are very pleased to be uh, to, to be able to bring this uh, life-saving feature to our uh, to our users. Uh, there are even more details than what we're going to cover in this uh, introduction to in-reach presentation. If you go to our support site and you look for everything you need to know about SOS, we work with our Garmin IERCC team. Um, and uh, really do a deep dive into SOS. So that's a great resource for you. We're gonna cover kind of at a high level what SOS is all about. So we've talked about the, the safety features, uh, excuse me, we've talked about the casual features, the ability to send and receive messages and track your location. Now imagine the situation where you have an emergency, you can take advantage of that messaging and tracking capability and the and the person, the, the organization on the other end is that Garmin IERCC, International Emergency Response Coordination Center. And that is staffed 24 seven, so you don't have to worry about your relative being awake to know that you're having an emergency. You don't have to um, worry that someone's gonna miss that. They're there 24 seven. And some of the benefits that are that are involved there, as I mentioned, it's, it is a dedicated incident management system uh, or service interactive using the Iridium satellite network that lets them send uh, uh, send and receive messages so you can reply. They may ask what's the nature of your emergency. That asterisk there is important. They will reach out for details, but if you are unable to respond, maybe due to the severity of your emergency, the the, res the rescue still happens. They, they certainly will still uh, follow through with sending the report to local area search and rescue. It is just an added benefit. We talk about doing everything we can to provide as much information to local search and rescue, whether it's a reply from the person in the field, added information that comes in from the friends, our friend or family member that is the emergency contact, 
uh, the emergency notes, all of that information goes into providing local area search and rescue with more detail to better uh, assist the person in the emergency. 100% global Iridium satellite network and tracking during an SOS, very straightforward. Um, so very powerful, even the ability to cancel the SOS if everything has been resolved. Uh, this is the workflow. So the person in the field, they have the emergency, they trigger the SOS, they have their device with them, they open the door, they press and hold, and after a second, the countdown timer starts. I'm going to cancel that just so it doesn't keep going, but that's as simple as it is. So you open the door and you, you mash the button, push it in, and after a few seconds, that cue that you've done everything you need to is when that countdown timer and the alarm starts. You have 20 seconds from there to cancel it. Uh, the IERCC will receive that message. They will see your location. Uh, they can look at all of your emergency contacts and notes, that sort of thing. From there, um, they will respond to the user in the field and acknowledge that they've received it. They will ask a question, is it a um, is it a medical emergency? Is it equipment failure? Something like that. If you can respond to that message, again, provides more detail to local search and rescue. Uh, if you can't, not a big deal, they'll continue. The IARCC then reaches out to the emergency services at your location based on the, uh, the location of your SOS. The um, emergency, the, the, the IARCC will act as the go-between between, between search and rescue and the person with the in-reach device. They message back and forth. They might actually ask you to reach out to a person on the local area search and rescue team and we'll look at a slide that shows how that how that looks if you're sent a phone number and asked to text them. While all of this is happening, at the same time they're reaching out to notify your emergency uh, uh, contacts. So that's where some additional information might come in uh, for local search and rescue, it's certainly where your emergency contacts are notified that something is happening. While all this is taking place, the person with the device in the field, they certainly can uh, communicate with, with the Garmin IARCC, but they can also send messages to friends and family and let them know, I've declared an SOS, this is what's happening, you can put your friends and family's um, you know, peace of mind there, or you can just allow the Garmin IERCC to manage all of that for you, depending on the, the severity of the situation you're dealing with. Uh, through all of this, the IERCC stays in contact with the user uh, and the responding organization, all of it tied together. And, and then the last bullet is important. Once assistance is no longer needed, you can cancel the SOS. So this is the flow to trigger an SOS. I already showed you how to do it. Lift the protective cover, press and hold the button, wait for the countdown timer. Um, I waited until I hear the, the alarm. That's what we recommend. And then if you can message with them, great. If not, they will continue uh, with the rescue operation or, or communicating with local area search and rescue. And at the end, select cancel. Some tips for triggering an SOS. Um, if the Garmin IERCC sends you a phone number, this is what it's going to look like. You'll get a please contact John at this number, and then you can select that message. You arrow up to it, you press enter, and it will compose a message to the phone number from that uh, conversation. So you don't have to worry about writing it down and transcribing it, that sort of thing. Um, so, so for weather forecasts, we'll look, uh, one of the features we mentioned that InReach is capable of is requesting a weather forecast. There are three types of forecasts. The first one is a basic land forecast. This counts as a text message. There is a premium land forecast. There's an additional charge uh, for, uh, in the US, it's a, a dollar charge for a premium forecast. That extends your forecast over a longer period of time and has more uh, granular number of of forecast readings, but you get things like the uh, the precipitation, the temperature, uh, those details that help you make decisions when you're in the backcountry. There's also a marine forecast, and this forecast is designed around deep water. It's not really for near shore uh, forecasts. You have to be off, um, you know, at least five miles off out to sea for marine forecast, but it provides things like wave height and wave period and wind speed and direction and those details that are critical 
for marine applications. Um, this is how to request a weather forecast from all of these devices. You first go to the weather page or the weather menu and you can choose either your current location or you could specify a new location based on waypoint, that sort of thing. Uh, and then you choose from those three types that we just talked about, basic, premium, marine. And then you can select get forecast. So very useful. Um, you use the weather forecast a lot on, on weekend trips even uh, and certainly longer trips to find out if there's any kind of precipitation or, or weather change headed uh, our way. Let's look at it in navigation and how we plan uh, for some of our adventures. We've talked about messaging, tracking, and safety. We've talked about the device capabilities. We're going to look at some of the, um, the features around navigation and planning. You can create waypoints and use them with your uh, inReach device. From the Explore website, you click the waypoint icon at the top of the map. It's very straightforward. You put in a name, change the symbol, hit the green check mark, and that will create that waypoint, put it into your list of waypoints. Uh, this is how to do it on the device. You can create waypoints in the field. All four devices supported, it amounts to choosing either a waypoint button or selecting a waypoint icon from a, from a menu on the device. Same thing, give it a name, give it a symbol, save it to your, uh, to your waypoint list. How to navigate to that waypoint? Well, after you've created it, you'll see uh, right there in the screenshot, there was that new option that we used, and then below that, the waypoint for uh, Gibraltar Rock on the long, excuse me, the Mount Rainier hike. Select it, choose navigate, it will calculate. Uh, some devices will calculate using the topographic data, some devices will calculate as a straight line, depending on which model you have. I got ahead of myself, this is how we do it on the Mini and the GPS Map 66i. This is how we do it with the Mini 2 from the home page. Press OK, choose Navigate to a waypoint. Um, very good. We can also create routes uh, in the Explore website. That's handy. So not only do you have the waypoint that shows the trailhead and the summit, but you can create the route from the start to the finish. That process in the Explore website is um, involves tapping at each turn on the trail and so you, so it's a little bit manual but you can draw in the details of your route and then you can give it a name and select a color hit the green check mark to to say done uh, we have done a detailed webinar on the gps map 66i and inreach mini 2 which use the new course creator feature in the explore app and i mentioned that here because that is the new and improved course creation tool that we've just recently released. It works in the Explore app, not in the EarthMate app. It allows you to set your start and your finish and have the course automatically follow the trail, so a lot faster. I encourage people with that 66i or the Mini 2, uh, the Montana, those devices that support the Explore app, take advantage of that course creator feature in the Explore app. It's, uh, it's very convenient. but this is how everyone can create a course, or excuse me, create a route in the Explore website. Once you've created this, you can navigate um, and navigate a course, and this is the workflow for that. You go to the route menu, that's where the list of all of your synced routes um, will be. You choose the route and you choose navigate. Once you choose navigate, uh, it will uh, show the, the route information on the map page. For the Mini 2, similar process, you go to, you press OK to gain access to the list of, of glances or widgets for the, for the um, device, and you can choose courses, select the course you're interested in, and choose Go. An important thing that we like to talk about is managing your user data, and that is all done with a, with a tool that we refer to as collections. And if you think of a collection as a way to take the waypoints and the routes or the courses or the tracking data for a particular adventure, whether it be a hike to Mount Madison in the White Mountains or uh, my bucket list Mount Rainier hike that we talk about. The collection would be named, um, you know, Mount Madison hike. 
and you would put into that collection the waypoints and the tracks uh, and, and routes for that. So the way we do this is we choose that plus symbol and, and create a new collection. You give it a name and then you can put a checkbox next to the waypoints, the routes, the, the information you want to be part of this collection. Once you've saved the collection, you can use the settings to configure whether it gets synced to a particular Garmin device uh, or, or how you manage that collection. So uh, you can use it to control, you know, there's a check mark to toggle on and off if you want to show or hide the collection as well. So a very powerful tool for organizing your user data. One of the tips that we like to show people is after you've gone to the trouble of creating the waypoints and the courses and the routes and all those things on the map, there's a very easy and fast way to create a collection. You create the new collection and then on the collection page, you see at the bottom the select all on map. So if I just center my, uh, my map over this new data that I created, I can choose select all on map and automatically place all of that user data into one collection. It's very convenient. So we'll talk about the companion apps here uh, towards the end of our presentation. And, uh, and the key, um, you know, certainly as you see in the note, there are more in-depth uh, details on how to use each of our companion apps in the webinars that are, that are specific to devices. But I want to talk at a high level about the similarities between these two apps. There's the Garmin Explorer app and the EarthMate app. They both can be installed on your smartphone, whether it's iOS or Android. They both are used to control in-reach features like uh, the pairing and the, the sending messages, starting tracking, declaring an SOS. We're going to look at those pieces. Both apps can do that. You can download additional map data to both, uh, both apps. That's USGS, excuse me, that's topographic maps the public lands, aerial imagery, and the USGS quad sheets. You can download all of those to the device. You can also use your EarthMate or Explorer app to sync user data between your app and the, and the Explore uh, website or the Garmin Cloud. So similarities, very, very um, useful apps. There are, um, and as we've said, the, the EarthMate app is for the InReach Mini, the InReach Explorer Plus, the InReach SE Plus, and the, the older DeLorme devices. It was the first app that we created and works with those, those older InReach products. The newer companion app for Garmin is the Explorer app, and that works with the Mini 2, the GPS Map 66i, the Marine version of GPS Map with the 86i, the Montana, and the Alpha. Um, so keep that in mind, but remember the the core features on all of the apps are the same. The, the one area where there's some differentiation is that the newer Explore app has that collection support and the course creator feature that I, mess it, that, I, that I mentioned where you can set a start and a finish and it will automatically calculate a course. That's a pretty big uh, improvement there with the Explore app. You can also do things like start navigating from the app where you choose the course you want to follow and it will send a message to your connected wearable, you know, your, your Phoenix smartwatch or your uh, GPS Map 66i, those kind of things. So some improvements in Explore, but in general, same functionality. And, and this just lists that functionality again. Um, please, pretty good. So let's look. Uh, pairing and syncing is an important tool in both apps. These are some high-level instructions. Uh, the app actually has the instructions on how to pair your device with the app it really amounts to going into the pairing screen on the device and following the pairing instructions in the app there are even more details on support.carmen.com for that and then syncing i don't actually cable connect my devices to my computer anymore um, maybe for a firmware update but all of my syncing happens through the app so i'll do my planning even if i plan on the website i know that that planning content goes to my um, Explore app, and then I can sync my device with the Explore app, and that will move that content onto the device. It occurs automatically every time the app is open, and uh, instructions, you can find all the instructions on the website, or the device tab, sorry. Uh, 
So how to send a quick text message from the app. This is, we talked about how to do it from the device, sending it from the app. You go to the menu on each app uh, where you see the messages option. You specify who you want to send it to. You can choose a quick text from the list of 20 quick texts and then you hit send. Similar process in the Explorer app, just the icons are in a few different places. Um, and then the note at the bottom that messages sent through the enrich device do, uh, uh, sorry, the, even though you're sending the message through the app, it requires the enrich device to be present because that is how the message actually gets sent. Yeah. So quick text messages, sending a custom message, this is really useful because you get access to that keyboard. So you, same process from the Earthmate or Explore app, you choose uh, messages who you wanna send it to and then use the keyboard to type that message. Remember that you can uh, enable or disable the location information. If you want someone to know where you are because it's relevant to the message you're sending, make sure you turn on your location uh, so that they see that. Um, and then just uh, make sure you provide enough detail in your, in your text message. So sending a custom message. The app also allows you Earthmate and Explore to start and stop tracking right on the map, uh, uh, sorry, go to the tracking menu option, choose start tracking or stop. It also gives you access to the ability to share uh, your, your map share link through the app as well. Same note at the bottom, the in-reach device is actually what's sending and receiving information over satellite. So while you're using the app, it doesn't work unless you're connected to the device and, and you see you know, that green dot in the Explorer app next to the InReach Mini is your clear visual cue that you have a connected device. Without that, you wouldn't actually be able to access tracking to begin with. You can trigger an SOS. They, we know the majority of people in an emergency actually just open the door on the SOS, uh, on the device and press and hold the SOS button. But if you have an emergency and you're, you have your app, maybe your inReach is behind you on your backpack or something like that, you can use the app. It's a two-step process. You have to press and slide the SOS in order to declare, but you get that same countdown timer. The default message goes out to the IERCC, Garmin IERCC, and they will respond to you with a question. You can use the phone to text back and forth uh, with them during your emergency. And, and again, all of that is happening with the in-reach device. Even though you're using an app, the actual transmission of information is happening with your connected in-reach device. So don't set it down or move away from it during your emergency. Weather forecasts are capable through uh, the, the Earthmate and Explore app. Go to the weather page, choose to update your forecast, specify whether you want basic premium or uh, marine. Similar process, slightly different look for the Explore app, whether you can update your last location or request a new location and, uh, and choose the, the type of forecast that you're interested in. In order to navigate to a waypoint, you can pull up your waypoint list, you can choose the waypoint and select navigate. I uh, have already mentioned one difference with the Explore app here. If I choose to navigate a waypoint, from the Explore app, any of my connected devices will receive that navigate command from the app. It is amazing. All of my friends and family have, uh, have been very happy because I used to take a long time at the trailhead to start navigating from my app, to start navigating from my, my watch, my Phoenix watch, so that I could see the elevation uh, remaining on my watch. And I would start navigating from my GPS map 66i so that I had the satellite communication. Now I can choose start navigating for a waypoint or a course, which we'll see in a second, from the Explore app. And it will automatically send that message to both devices so they start doing what they're supposed to do without me taking all that extra time. And I can move quicker through my, uh, my setup and, and just start enjoying my hike. How to navigate a route or course, same as a waypoint, you just choose your route from a route list rather than from, a, um, from the waypoint list. For the Explore app, select library courses and uh, or routes and choose to navigate. And then you will see that pop-up that I mentioned that shows um, 
that it's going to asking do you want to also navigate on your phoenix do you also want to navigate on your gps map 66i to which you would say yes of course and and off you go last tip for us here uh, and this is a best practices tip make sure that you practice before you go before your trip i say this because you want to make sure that you uh, shake out any kinks in the system this is this is like fundamental for any piece of equipment that you're going to bring with you on your adventure into the backcountry, whether it's your um, your your white gas stove or your layering system or your sleeping system you want to definitely check it all out to make sure everything's working well we want you to practice with your in reach device and that includes sending a test message um, making sure that, well, first, make sure that you sync your in-reach device. We talked about lots of configuration just now, how to uh, set up your preset, check-in messages, your quick text, how to plan with waypoints and, and courses. If you've done all of that on the website, you need to remember to sync it to your device uh, so that you have it with you in the field. And, and not only sync, but then go verify, visually verify in your Explorer app or your earthmate app that you see it in the app go and verify on your device that you see the waypoint that you see the course make sure you have all that working before you get into the backcountry and realize you don't have the course you need to follow to get to your campsite there's also a test message capability that is used to test the round trip messaging ability of the system you can go into test messages uh, there's five free uh, that you get each month that will send a message to the Iridium satellite. The satellite sends it to the server, and then it echoes your message back, and you get this very satisfying green check mark that lets you know the system is working. If you haven't used your device for a while because you suspended in the off season, make sure that you send that test message. Make sure your device is active. We, we hear on occasion, and it's a sad story, that someone got to the trailhead and couldn't use their inReach because they didn't take it out of suspend. They have to go home and fix that before they can start their hike or they end up um, you have to make tough decisions about um, whether the device will work so always test your gear practice before you go um, sync your device after testing lots of uh, really straightforward but but make sure you get it all set up correctly and practice and, and when i talk to people who are new to the system i even give them homework assignments i say okay Take your in-reach device, go take the dog for a walk, walk around the park, send your map share to a relative, ask them to follow along because you're testing the system, send them a message, ask them to reply to you, receive the reply, make sure you can read it and have your chats back and forth. Do the kind of things that you anticipate you'll be doing when you're out on your adventure. Much easier to practice and learn in the park and on the side of the 14 or when you're on your bucket list trip. Perfect. Uh, last slide here, additional resources. We like to share this in all of our webinars. We've talked a ton about the Garmin Explore website. There's the link. The support site is a fabulous resource for people. That's where our product support team and our marketing team put all of their help documentation. There are manuals, there are product videos. There are prior webinars just like this one that are recorded and posted there for all of you to go back and review. And my favorite section in uh, for, for inReach is the Garmin blog, www.garmin.com slash blog. You can go there to read about the latest adventures from our uh, inReach users when they have a, a good experience, they share their story and we turn that into a post on the blog.